In this video, we'll talk about cyclic GMP as a second messenger. If you haven't yet subscribed our channel, hit that subscribe button because biology is fun when we learn with animation. So cyclic GMP is an important cell signaling molecule. It's a second messenger. It is generated from the GTP or guanosine triphosphate. And guanosine triphosphates get converted into cyclic GMP with the help of guanylyl cyclase. Let's draw the parallel. Adenylate cyclase converts ATP into cyclic AMP and guanylyl cyclase converts GTP into cyclic GMP. Alternatively, cyclic GMP can be broken down with the help of phosphodiesterase and basically it can form GMP. Now, cyclic GMP is important for nitric oxide cyclic GMP pathway in the smooth muscles and also cyclic GMP pathway is important for phototransduction. We are going to look at the role and importance of cyclic GMP in these two biological contexts. So here we are looking at a smooth muscle and a capillary which is associated with that smooth muscle. So that this capillary endothelial cell activates G protein which ultimately give rise to the activation of protein uh, phospholipase C then IP3 leading to increase in calcium which is associated with conversion of L-arginine to citrulline and nitric oxide. In simple words the capillary endothelial cell is basically the production hub for nitric oxide. Nitric oxide gets recepted by nitric oxide receptor which is present in the smooth muscle cell. Nitric oxide receptor activates enzyme that converts GTP into cyclic GMP. Now cyclic GMP binds to a kinase known as protein kinase G. Remember the cyclic AMP binds to protein kinase A. It is analogous. Protein kinase G being a kinase can phosphorylate several downstream targets. Many of these downstream targets are component of the cross bridge formation between actin and myosin. So basically protein kinase G and cyclic GMP regulates how this cross bridge would be forming and it prevents the cross bridge formation thereby relaxes the smooth muscle. Now we talk about the second context, the retina and how phototransduction takes place in our retina. So here we are looking at a zoomed version of our retina where we can see the rod cells and the cone cells. So now we are taking a look at the rod cells and we would see rhodopsin is basically the pigment molecule which is sensitive to light. It can change its conformation when light is present or not. So rhodopsin has a specific molecule which is known as 11 cis retinal which upon light treatment can gets converted into trans retinal and that leads to a change in the configuration which activates a G protein known as transducin. Transducin gets activated when there is a light impingement. So basically there is a conformation change in the rhodopsin molecule when there is light versus when there is not there is no light. So this conformation change triggers the GDP hydrolysis and get and replace it with the GTP. GTP bound transducin is active and active transducin eventually translocate to activate an enzyme known as cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase. All these things is happening inside the rod cell. Cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase degrade the cyclic GMP into GMP. Now cyclic GMP being very important for a ion channel which is a cyclic nucleotide gated channel. It generally it allows sodium to come in and it depolarizes the neuron. So whenever there is a light, these sodium in entry is blocked. So cyclic GMP gets converted to GMP and that is basically the light response. Now what happens is our cells or our cells of the retina gets activated when there is darkness. They are generally firing when there is darkness and they inhibit the firing when there is light. So light literally trigger the uh, hyperpolarization, not the depolarization. So basically the, the neurons of our retina stop firing when there is light. You must be thinking this is counterintuitive then how the visual information is processed. Now let me tell you the visual information is processed because action potential is an all or none phenomena. It's like a binary code. Happening of action potential means something, not having an action potential also have a meaning and that is what happens in case of the visual processing. When there is light, the 
rod cells stop firing and that is happening due to the cyclic GMP depletion and that's how cyclic GMP is really important for visual information processing which happens in the visual cortex. So let me tell you in cyclic GMP amplification also there is a uh, amplification of the signal because there are basically cyclic GMP molecules which can be activated by which can be converted into GMP by several hundreds of cyclic GMP phosphodiesterase molecule. Note that the number of cyclic GMP that gets converted into GMP is in the multiple of the number of phosphodiesterase enzyme. So this inhibits the sodium ion entry. So it in a sense depolarize, uh, hyperpolarize the neurons or prevent the neuron to fire. But when there is a uh, withdrawal of light or there is prolonged darkness there would be beta and arestine which would prevent the g protein to be activated or to be interacting with the cyclic gmp phosphodiesterase in this case there would be activity of guanylyl cyclase which converts uh, basically this uh, which would reproduce the gmp molecules and that would again trigger sodium ion influx and allow the uh, firing of these neurons. So moral of the story, cyclic GMP is involved in the phototransduction and cyclic GMP uh, levels determine whether a neuron would be depolarized or hyperpolarized. Basically cyclic GMP, when cyclic GMP is high, neurons fire, that happens in the dark. When cyclic GMP is low, neurons doesn't fire because the uh, cyclic GMP gated channels are inactive. So now in this video, we looked at the role of cyclic GMP as a second messenger and how it is important for uh, physiology. Get notes and flashcards in our Facebook page or Instagram page. Links are provided in the description. You can click on super thanks. You can pay via Paytm, UPI or PayPal. See you in the next video.